Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Steel Division. Now, let me start off with something that um, some people may have missed. This game is in open beta. And the way that you can join the open beta is by buying the early access version of the game, or just buying the game altogether. And that immediately grants you access to the open beta. Of course, with the Steam refund policy, you can play the game for, I believe, up to four hours before you have to make up your mind if you want to keep it, or you can still return it. So you can have a look at the game, buy it, and if you don't like it, you can get, I believe, refunded to your Steam wallet. So you can still buy something else if it turns out that you don't quite like the game. So if you want to play right now and don't want to wait for the release later in May, then you can. You can immediately go for it. Anyways, on to this game. We are looking at Vici, and he is using the 91st Luftlande Air Division. This is going to be an interesting match because they tend to be more difficult to make it work with them. It's an infantry heavy deck and the current way that the game is set up seems to be more in favor of fast vehicles as well as armored warfare so that the infantry with their short range weaponry and most of the time total lack of anti-tank weaponry are just not that good at both pushing as well as defending against armored pushes because they simply cannot reach out and touch the vehicle that's firing at them. So let's see how Vici can make it work. He's going to start out with a push towards the middle of the map where there is a lot of terrain for him to capture. Most of these buildings can be used. Some of them are grouped up such as these. This is not one building. This is a sector of two buildings which the game considers one you have a few more of those down the middle. So it's not like you can capture every single building in here. Unfortunately not. It's going to be interesting to see how he uses this deck. I think we can all learn something from it. Uh, let's see what he opens with. A couple of infantry units in the Opal Blitz. He also has the Kubel over there with reconnaissance infantry. Now the Blitzes are pretty nice and fast, especially on the road. 88 kph. That is one fast vehicle. The Kubel, same thing. 88. 20 kph off-road, but hopefully there's not too much off-roading that needs to be done here. They can pretty easily take this road, drive into the factory complex here, and try to take as much terrain as possible. Now it's a 3v3 conquest, so he's not alone. He is also in here with uh, Wagyo, who's also using Luftlande, and Pais, who's using the 12th Panzer. We have uh, Wagyo on his right flank, and that means that Pais is on his left. Let's see where they're going to go. Let's see, we got Pies opening up here with the Firefly, of course. A couple of infantry units, uh, anti-tank gun. Note how he hasn't brought any AA gun. Correction, he has brought one AA gun. AA, I find, is not that important from the start. Um, usually, people don't invest too much into planes, and if they do, it tends to be a reconnaissance aircraft, which well, you can consider an aircraft, reconnaissance aircraft, a threat all by themselves. But most of the time, they will not be carrying any weapons and they will not be doing any significant damage. Short of spotting your forces and ruining your ambush, that is. Now, it looks like he's not going to be alone down the middle. we got a whole train of vehicles coming in. And I'd say that these might be the armored guys. Yep, we got M3HTs coming in. Fallschirmjäger already in the building, and note the range on that heat rocket that they carry. 150 meters. From their current position, they're still going to need to get a lot closer if they really want to use that AT weapon. But holy shit, look at this. Anybody got an airstrike? And yes, he does have an airstrike. Airstrike comes in. Pins down and knocks back everybody who's still standing. And granted, he might not have gotten a lot of kills, but at least he got the objective, which is to slow these guys down so that his own infantry can move up. And who knows, maybe they can get into range at this point. Falschemjäger getting ready to fire at this point. They still don't quite have the range, but these guys probably will. Fallschirm Jaegers are pushing up and they might finally get a kill on the M3 HT there. And instead they're using their machine gun on something else. Yeah. There's a train in the way. That's why they can't see the vehicle. 
They're doing a nice job suppressing these guys. We have one of the first infantry groups getting destroyed. But note the amount of fire that these guys are taking. And just note how cool these guys are under fire. Normal infantry groups are pretty quick to panic, but these guys, very, very battle-hardened veterans, it seems like they just don't care. Now, you can also see that these guys have these wings under them. This means that they are Fulsherm or uh, para groups, which tend to be surrounded, and usually infantry that's surrounded tends to panic a bit more, but these guys don't have that issue. Now, they're not surrounded yet, but <laughs> despite all of the fire that's coming down on them, they are still getting engaged, but it really doesn't seem to bother them that much. The problem that I see here is that he doesn't really have a way of dealing with these vehicles at the moment. He's bringing up another AA gun, but this is pretty much highlighting the exact issue that the Luftlande has. If an armored group like this one really wants to lock you down, then they will lock you down. There is just not that much that you have that can reach out and touch them short of bringing aircraft or anti-tank guns. Anti-tank guns can work, sure, but the problem again is that they're slow, and then the alternative will become a tank. But tanks, well you just don't get proper tanks in this deck. Let's see what he's bringing in. Another Kubel with more machine guns coming in. Over on the left, it seems that his ally, Pies over here, is not doing that well. He doesn't have that many units left. We have another aircraft coming in. Takes a shot at the M4A1, suppresses it, it gets pinned down and is now retreating. Correction, the AT gun is getting pinned down. But this vehicle definitely got shaken and is now trying to pull back. Now he's bringing an AT gun. Let's hope we can offload it in time and get some shots at these vehicles before they manage to make it out. The front line, as you can see on the minimap, looks a bit curious. Blue has pushed on the left flank. The middle seems to be mostly in control of red. And then the right flank, again, is another push for red. The problem with this area is that there's not that much terrain cover. So not a lot of buildings for infantry, that is. And there are only few bridges to get across. Now, I don't believe that any of these vehicles are amphibious, especially not units such as the Panzer 35, but using wargame tactics, so just getting a couple of transports and floating them across wherever you like, is really not that possible. It's just not a feature that's in the game. Now, look at this. These guys are really, really close. And now they've been detected. Now they are getting worried, because we have four half-tracks firing at them. So yeah, they're getting a bit panicked at this stage. And now we're seeing accurate fire coming in. The other group seems to be pushing out into the next building. And they got one of the leader squads there. Unfortunately, still, they cannot quite get the range to go to town on one of those M3A1s. Those half-tracks really seem to be a problem. There we go. He got one. That's one transport down. The guys are once again taking an immense amount of fire, getting pinned down. And as I have learned after watching uh, quite a few dozen of your comments, you have a unit like this that's pinned down. Select it and press R and it will retreat to a slightly safer position. And we also have a Humber AA unit coming in which is a unit that is not the same players, so we may have two players coming in to push on this position. Fortunately, the Boy to Firefly from Pies is still alive and manages to push back on that vehicle. One shot, another shot, he's completely panicked. He's not going to stick around here forever. Volschemjäger unfortunately caught out in the open, but the other Volschemjägers are now getting into range of that into tank weapon, and they are very happy to use it. Another reloading, aligning, and killed. That's another transport dead. I think he got a bit too aggressive with his transports right there. He got a bit too happy about the use of his transports for short range fighting. And you can see that these guys are now falling back. 
But the problem still lasts. We still don't really have an anti-tank weapon over here. What we do have is yet another aircraft. BF-109, armed with a couple of rockets and, of course, machine guns, comes in, goes for the dive, and unfortunately... No, actually it did. It knocked out the Humber AA unit there. As I mentioned in previous videos, Humber AA units and AA units in general tend to be really effective at not just killing off aircraft, because, well, they're not very effective at that, but they can do some immense amounts of damage against infantry at ranges where the infantry really has no way of reaching out and touching them. Now the front line is shifting quite a lot. We currently have 53% of terrain for red. And we have a couple of um, tanks from the real Rob there, the armored group, falling, correction, that's... Uh, yeah, no, that is the armored group. Falling back pretty far. Much, much farther than I'd expected. A couple of attack markers going up, probably marking the positions off of these units. So that they may be targeted by airstrikes later on. Now, how is he going to try and counter these groups? The infantry is definitely not getting any closer, I can grant you that much. You can see that some of these guys are starting to run out of ammo. Especially their machine gun is about to get depleted. Which would mean that their long range weaponry is completely out. And these guys are pushing up but they don't have any short range anti-tank left. They've depleted all of those rounds and probably gotten most if not all of their kills. You can see that the game does tell you this. The game says, hey, it's running out of machine guns, and I think that the other icon stands for the anti-tank weapon. So the game really uh, helps you out there, in that sense. And now with this area, look at this, the game is really not sure what's going on here. Another push coming in on the right flank. We have one M3A1 pushing forward. Now dueling it out with an anti-tank gun. Crew knocked out. These are anti-tank guns, or AA guns, look at that. That's a transport. But it is getting a ferocious amount of fire, knocking it back. It's falling back, its crew is knocked out, the anti-tank gun... Wait, one, the anti-tank gun bounces. We're looking at a vehicle that has two frontal armor. How did the anti-tank gun bounce with a 5 AP round? Curious. Now, um, as you can see in this match, it is still not very easy to push back with these guys. The Fallschirmjäger groups, or the Luftlande 91st, is... Well, it's tough. Um, they are very good at holding terrain, especially terrain such as this. They are decent at pushing up if you have enough structures. But these half-tracks, they're not expensive units. They're 30 pointers, they do come with infantry of course, and they are just merrily keeping everybody suppressed and making it so that he cannot push up anymore. So in their current form, I'd say that the Luftlander really needs some attention. It really needs to find some way to make itself stronger, because it cannot sheerly rely on its infantry to capture buildings and then hope that some airstrikes might do the job. Nice shot there by the Firefly, immediately knocking out another tank. I think that was an M5A1. Yep. Another tank's been destroyed. Frontline, 55% for red. They're getting a plus one tick. The left side for Pies over here is really, really weak. Is he pushing up on the right? Ah, uh, I don't think he is. So where are his units? Ah, he was saving up. He just brought in a Panther D. These things are very, very good tanks. Very high amount of armor penetration. Um, good range. Accuracy of 5 is pretty good. Especially some of the later Panther models, I believe, have even better accuracy. Their armor is alright at 12. Um, that usually means that they can get penetrated by an anti-tank gun pretty easily. But these units tend to be able to dish out more than they tend to receive. That is, if you don't use them as a full pushing unit, because that's not really something that they're very good at. Now at this point, we also have an anti-tank group here. 
these are slightly better at ranges than uh, these guys. 150 meter range for the 149 millimeter heat rounds. These guys carry 88 millimeter heat rounds, but can fire them at 250 meter range, and at the same time they do some spotting. A couple of rockets going out again. An M57 or M5 gun's been destroyed. A couple of AA firing back at them, immediately giving their own position away and thereby getting fired at by yet another aircraft. So he's just trying to keep them at bay, and if you can make the enemy fall back, that means that your front line is usually shifting towards them, and thereby you have a bit of an easier time getting more terrain. At this point we're looking at a 59% terrain for red, so they're doing quite well. And I believe that over here on the right, Wagyo is also using a Luftlande division. You can see he's making slightly more use of tanks. He has these uh, Panzer 35s every now and then. A couple of these guys using it as suppressive fire or supporting units. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job against the British here. We have the Vickers HMG, we have the rifle groups there. And these machine guns are doing a good job at keeping the Falschmäger at bay. But against a tank, yeah, they just don't have that much. They just don't really have any options. Currently 60% of map control for red, so they're really doing a good job. At this point the command M5A1 could be a problem. Let's see what the Boyta can find. It's pretty risky pushing forward with just one tank. But note how the front line is shifting. That's the Panther. The Panther is able to just keep pretty much everything at bay. Yes, it's now taking some fire from a Spitfire, of all things, so it's not going to be able to do that much damage. And yes, it might worry the tank a little bit, but that's just about it. Now the unit comes in at short range. Will the Panther fire first, is the question. Ooh, that was close. Panther getting shaken. Lost line of sight. I'd say that he really needs to get a bit more reconnaissance in here, otherwise he's not going to keep this tank alive for very long. These things are pricey. 240 points for that tank. You can see that blue seems to be pushing back pretty hard here. And we even have an AT gun firing potentially into the rear of the Panther. But this tree line is all that saves him. Until the tank that he couldn't quite identify has been able to kill off his Panther. And immediately the front line shifts back. And immediately blue recaps the terrain. Another BF-109 comes in. And wipes out the anti-tank gun. This is a pretty good way of keeping these guys at bay. But especially later on in the battle, it becomes more difficult. Because there tends to be more AA. Now very nicely, a supply truck from Pice came in here to resupply his guys. And take note, it's resupply, not reinforce. It's not like you're going to be able to heal up these troops and get them back to full strength. If only... That's something that I really miss from Wargame, I've got to say. Over on the right, the battle is still going strong. Unfortunately, Mind of Steel is able to keep those tanks away. And more than that, it seems that they're pushing back pretty heavily here. This is uh, only Mind of Steel that's operating here. Wakio has also put up a reconnaissance plane so we can see a bit more of the enemy. It's a bit risky though, with a couple of Spitfires overhead. This aircraft seems to be taking a lot of damage and is falling back. Surprisingly, it's not being evac'd yet. And the lightning finally took it out. Lightning currently falling back. And the Spitfires are still circling the area. They're still merrily keeping their presence so that enemy aircraft are going to have a hard time surviving any push here. But just take note of this. This AA gun, the Flak 38, has been firing at the Spitfire for quite a while. Spitfire is a bit stressed, but other than that, not so much. It's, it seems to be fine. Despite the fact that these rounds, I can barely keep an eye on the Spitfire, these rounds seem to be cutting to the Spitfire rather close. There we go, the AA gun is out of fire. It, the Spitfires are still up there. I think that AA needs a bit of work. 
I understand that AA in these time frames was not that effective. But seriously, an aircraft flying overhead, circling, and a 20mm gun consistently firing at it, not doing much damage, and barely able to keep the plane away from itself? I think that needs some work. So, yeah, we don't need anti-guided or uh, missiles, uh, guided missiles for the airplane defense mode. Definitely not. They simply didn't have them, but this might be a little low on the end of the spectrum. I think we can get away with a bit more firepower for these guns. And you can see the Spitfire is still taking damage, currently from a Flak 36, 37 mm Finally, it seems to be falling back. But seriously? There's another Spitfire. Takes some damage, gets shaken. And it's getting evac'd. But really? These aircraft are just getting by without being punished. Barely. Ooh, close range encounter here. Love Panzer threes. Currently slugging it out with a Command M5. Took him out. Humber AA now taking a lot of damage. There we go. Target down. Oh, it's a Stuk 3 he has, actually. Now, it seems that our main character here, Vichy, has decided to switch from bringing in many more units to now just consistently flying air sorties and doing airstrikes all over the place. Which I think for the Luftlande might be a good way to just keep the enemy at bay. Especially as they don't really have any ways of pushing up here. I believe that they do get artillery, like any deck. So you could put up a smoke screen and then try to push up. And if you do push up, you might be able to get a bit more terrain here. So you might be able to get that plus one going up even further. Currently, it seems that we've got another M3HT pushing forward. The question is, did they drop off any infantry? And yes, they did. We got reconnaissance infantry. Napalm troops immediately going to bat here. Burning out the reconnaissance troops. And once they have performed their mission, they're immediately ducking back out. The M3HT had something to fire at, but currently doesn't see the guys anymore. And the enemy no longer has a scouting position there. Over on the left, we have a couple of attack markers. I'm wondering when the next airstrike is going to come in. Nice shot. Did you kill it? Another round. Phase C has begun. So now we can bring in more expensive and especially more effective units. It seems, though, that... The push from the 91st Luftland on the right flank is not doing very well. They seem to be running out of infantry, out of reconnaissance units, out of firepower altogether. Over here we have a, a bit of a skirmish between the Spade Troop and a Mortar Group. Mortar Group's not really being able to do anything. The Spade Troop spotting them and then the uh, Panzer III finally getting the kill there. Another infantry rifle group comes forward, so once again we got the Storm Pioneers moving up. And they don't have range. Yep, no, they do have range on their napalm thrower. There we go. Pit down. And yes, these guys are taking some fire. But the sheer amount of damage going in on that infantry group is just tremendous. That is what you can do with a flamethrower. What I've been able to gather from the gameplay, this is pretty much the only positioning that you can use the flamethrower effectively. Because anywhere else, it's not going to be very effective. It just doesn't have the firepower. Now let me turn the sound down a bit more, because as we zoom in, the game tends to get a bit loud. Unfortunately, there goes his Storm Pioneers. Now, time for the Falschemiege to push up. They have two out of four rounds of their anti-tank weapon, so they will not be able to kill off all of these vehicles. They might get in range of this AT. But for now... Oh, that worked. What was that? That was an anti-tank gun, I think. He's also decided to bring in a Martyr II. Martyr II does come with HE rounds. Unfortunately, it doesn't have two mit... Actually, does it? Yeah, uh, it comes with ten HE rounds. That's not a lot, 
but it can really help in suppressing or killing off enemy infantry that seems to be pushing out. The group of infantry there are completely pinned down. There's not a lot that they can do. Unfortunately, his mortar has already been destroyed by a command M5A1. So I have another M5A1 pushing forward. And Blue is doing airstrikes with their own aircraft. We've got a 38 Lightning coming in. And you can see that, again... This thing just pushes in, drops its ammunition, and pulls out. Without seemingly having taken a lot of damage. So once again, we really need to do something about these AA guns. Because I don't always need to kill enemy aircraft, but it would be nice if I could at least dissuade it from pushing up any further. A couple of aircraft on the left flank. Nice strike there. Got one kill on M3HT. And the others are currently falling back, and you can see that the armor group is now starting to use its more uh, effective tanks. The M3, sorry, the M4 A376. But it is still vulnerable to aircraft. And no, you will not likely kill it, but that's not always the goal. You can just keep this thing stunned and make sure it keeps falling back, then that will allow you to keep control of the front line. Which, I gotta say, on the left end is becoming pretty risky. We have one Panzer Grenadier group. And that's basically everyone that's holding this front line. Against what seems to be a pretty heavily armored push. We've got a couple of M3A1HTs, of course. we got the tank. we got infantry pushing up. And we still have one reconnaissance troop on this end. But just note how the front line is shifting. And fast. It's coming this way. And it's coming in a hurry. On the other end, it seems that um, <laughs> they have captured a GMC, so they have captured a resupply truck. Which is nice, because these things can also, hopefully, resupply the anti-tank ammunition for the Fallschirmjäger. I'm just not sure if they carry the right amount of ammunition. But I believe that the game does allow you to just resupply everything from this. And, yep, he managed to get it inside his own lines. Falschermjäger is pushing up. But this is going to be a problem. Because if these guys go down, and they will soon, then the front line is going to shift once again. Moreover, the spay troops has now, have now been detected, taking fire from the enemy scouts, as well as all of those supporting vehicles. And I'm afraid that one Panther D is not quite going to cut it going to need to get something a bit bigger in here. Because these things... Well, actually, it might work. They have a 13 AP value at max range. These guys have an 18. They tend to be a bit more accurate. The Panther D has an accuracy of 5. These also have an accuracy of 5, so it's even. But these guys have more veterancy. They're still reloading damage, or the shots are coming awfully close to the panther at this stage. Shot going out. Unfortunately, missed, but he bounced the round himself. Here's the air support. Falling back due to a hail of AA fire. And note that these M3HTs can also put up defensive AA fire. So, an enemy infantry push can also dissuade your aircraft from coming too close. Now these guys are coming awfully close. You need to either back away from them or start firing at these transports. I know the transports themselves aren't the real issue here, but I'm worried about what's going to come out of these transports. Come on, Panther. Falling back. He's panicked. There goes the front line, shifting rapidly, almost completely encircling the Panther. If it doesn't. There we go, he's back in action. Ready to fire. Missed. He's bringing in another tank. Panzer 4J. Not very heavily armored. Decent gun on it though. Accuracy leaves something to be desired at 4 out of 10. And once again, the Panther is falling back. Over to the front. Um, I don't think that he's doing that much to push up as he's probably distracted with managing aircraft on the left. Which is definitely recommended can see that once they had 60% of the map and it's now been pushed back to 53. So they are losing terrain. Panzer 4J putting some suppressive fire into these transports. 
main gun going out and completely missing the target. Fuel explosion on the Panzer and it's out. BF-109 goes in, tries to get a couple of rockets on target here, does some damage but not enough. So the Panzer just keeps falling back. And over on the right, the situation is quite different as the right flank is almost completely controlled by the other Luftlander division. So they're doing really, really well here. Where's the reinforcement route though? This is air and this is land, so if they can get a bit closer they can completely cut this area off of the map for blue. But the same is at high risk of happening here as well. What is that? Oh, they're clashing inside the same building. Grenadier surrendered. Well, that ain't good. They're trying to get into a building quickly. There we go. This is not going to go well for these guys, as they simply don't have enough supporting units. Over to the front, it seems that Blue still has quite a few of those transports standing by. Unfortunately. Because they were making nice progress. But unfortunately, they're running into quite a bit of those machine guns again. Come on. These guys are standing by, but there's just nothing they can fire at the moment. They simply don't have a lot of range. These might be in range if they use the same structure. They might be able to get a shot on the M3HT. The infantry is forced to fall back. A couple of mortar groups there. I gotta say, surprisingly, this panther is not dead yet. I really thought that by now it would be. But somehow, this thing is still alive. And he rapidly spawns another panther D, which is going to spawn all the way over here. So he needs to drive through the town and then link up. Now this would be a really valuable time to bring in a reconnaissance aircraft to make sure that this guy has something to shoot at. He is able to shoot at some stuff. Using the tree line for cover. Clever there. He's able to fire at the transports, but not take return fire from the tanks. Takes out a transport. Front line has been completely pushed back to blue uh, sorry, to red's side here. 53% of map control. Panther D suppresses one. We got a very heavy aircraft coming in here. A couple of 500 kilogram bombs. Unfortunately, there's just not that much that they have eyes on that they can drop it on. Unless he's going to turn around and drop it somewhere at the front of the map. Nope. He's coming all the way around. Where are you going with that JU-88? Looks like he's evacuating. We still have two tanks here falling back. Seems that the airstrikes so far were successful. They are keeping them at bay. There comes a scout vehicle, an SPW. Another shot going into one of these tanks. Very close there. Another aircraft comes in. What do we have here? That does look like it's going directly for the tanks. Thunderbolt. Drops a lot of rockets right on top of the Panther D, forcing the Panther D to fall back, and once again pushing terrain back as the other Panther is trying to keep up and just once again make a dent in the enemy front line. They're bringing in a Command Churchill 7. These things have a lot of armor 15. The 18 armor of the Panther D can cut through it, but it won't be easy. A couple of army rifles here, or armored rifles. Looks like they got him. Front line shifting again. Taking another shot. These guys are forced to bail out. But we have another tank. What is this? That might be the Churchill. Looks like two Churchills actually. One of them took a good hit. They bailed out <laughs> already. Let's see how the battle in the town is going. Nothing of new interest here. Now, interestingly, the game does give you pings in the replay system, but it doesn't show the 
markers. So it doesn't show what they're saying or uh, whether it's a defense marker, attack marker, or text marker. These, by the way, are anti-tank, or sorry, anti-ground, uh, no, anti-tank units. The HS-129B3. Rather effective. 18 penetration, they carry 13 rounds. Accuracy is pretty good. You can use these as um, a very quick way to get rid of a couple of these tanks. They managed to get the Command Churchill there. And we now have Vichy deploying a Stuk at very, very short range, I might add. Gets a perfect side shot here on the other Churchill. Churchill killed off. That's not the last of the tanks that they have, though, because they still have a Command M4A1 and the M4A3. So we still have all sorts of issues here. But at least they're not coming to this side as closely as they were last time. Unlike Red over here, which has managed to completely push out this side of the river. And now for Blue coming back from this side back to the right flank, it's going to be pretty difficult. Now, i got to say, the minimap apparently does not want to work with me today. Of aircraft patrolling, it looks like they don't really have a good shot at the targets that they were going for. Scout pushes forward. Panther D just still sitting out there, out in the field. Doesn't really have line of sight. Let's see, what's the BF-109 going for? The infantry here? Mm, nope. I'm not sure what it's going for, actually. I think it may have lost line of sight on its intended target. There we go. Took out a couple of infantry guys there. Panthers now pushing back. We have further aircraft strikes coming in. BF-109 going directly over the front line. And I don't think that that was the intention here. Forced to fall back due to the barrage of anti-air fire. Infantry here. Fortunately, these guys don't pack any kind of anti-tank weapons, so they can just not do anything against these pushing transports. The uh, SPW-233 there. And look at this one blob. There we go. Target is down. Target is not down, actually. Come on. Panthers, get him. This is one lucky transport. There we go. The 233 finally took it out. And we have another Panther coming in. The Panther G. This is the armored group trying to regain the terrain that they lost. They're doing a good job, but I'd say that the Panthers are slightly too aggressive here. And they may run into anti-tank guns if they don't get a lot of reconnaissance quickly. At the side here, we have Vichy pushing in with the Stuk 3, Falsham Jaegers and Grenadiers. Trying to encircle these armored rifles here. They seem to be getting that thing under control. Look at this, how the front line is shifting again. It's making a, an arrow shape towards the right. We also have a slight incursion on this end. Now, fortunately, these guys, again, don't really have that much they can do against the Stuk. Fortunately, they do carry a bazooka. But its range is pretty terrible at 200 meters. Their aircraft comes in, another BF-109 drops off and kills off the scouts. And they are both falling back. There's the rifles going down. With the LMG killed off in that position. I think the front line might be shifting back to right across the road. And once again, blue is down at 37% of map control. Red has a solid plus two. The game is almost coming to a close. BF-109 still circling overhead. Still looking for a target by the looks of it. Another group of grenadiers now pushing in from the south as well. And we have a reconnaissance tricycle, I think it is. <laughs> I still think that this thing looks really funny. Uh, they can be really effective. They're pretty fast. Medium stealth good optics. So, yeah, they can be pretty effective, but they have absolutely no armor to speak of. Panther D pushing forward, or correction, Panther G pushing forward. 
trying to suppress or assist the grenadiers. Looks like the armed leader or the uh, armory um, armored leaders here taking a lot of fire going down. That's the last bit of resistance that they have here, and there we go. 65% of the map is under control. The M4A1 was forced to pull all the way back. And this three some actually, this these three units seem to be doing a really good job. Panther Ds and one reconnaissance unit. And that's it. That's all that they're using at the moment. But they are doing a fantastic job at reclaiming virtually all of the terrain that they have lost to that blue armored group. Over on the right, Blue 4 has managed to get back on the other side of the river. There's just not that much left. We do have some Fusiliers here. Looks like an aircraft was trying to suppress and assist here, but is not going to be able to do much against these tanks. And we have another push coming down the road. This might be their last ditch effort. We have a couple of Shermans and a Honey Steward. This is going to be interesting. Looks like the BF-109s are going right for them. Tanks trying to suppress them. Not doing that much against them. Immediately falling back. Completely panicked. These guys are shaken. And that's not the only tanks that they have. We still have the M4A376 there, and another one coming forward. It's not actually slightly falling back. Panther D pushing up. Panther D gets the shot in and misses the tank. I gotta say, coming from Wargame, <laughs> these tanks feel really inaccurate. It's more of a uh, shoot in the general direction and hope that you hit something. Which, I think, is accurate for the arrow. Couple more tanks still alive, pushing up. Another Sherman there. We do have the Abwehr over there, which might be able to do something, but that tank's gonna have to get a whole lot closer. At this point, they brought a Flak 36 88mm gun, which can be quite effective against those tanks, but this train is currently blocking line of sight. Now, these things have, I believe it was something along the lines of, yeah, 16 points of AP. Is that tank really going to get into range? That would be lucky. Just needs to get a bit closer. Unfortunately, he lost a Stug there. Another aircraft coming in. Another BF-109. Once again, with the rocket pods. <coughs> and hits the Honey Stewart. Honey Stewart falling back. And the push is completely mitigated once again. And there we go, won the game. Let's see how he did on points. Uh, 2,762 points in kills, 745 points in losses. I stick to my guns here. This is um, very good work for a push if you have cover of terrain and if you have a lot of buildings. Otherwise, it would have been a completely different story. It would have been way more difficult to keep the enemy at bay and to just make sure that the tanks don't push you out. So yes, the 91st Luftlander, I think it needs some work because it just doesn't really have that much that it can do once you finally have enemies bringing heavier tanks, suppressing your positions with artillery and then pushing in. So let me know how you use the Luftlander. And if you have a good replay on how exactly you push with this deck, other than through town centers or factories or stuff. Let me know. Send it in through the link in the description. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you work this deck. Anyway, that's it for this gameplay. Let me know what your thoughts are. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more Steel Division.